invest a lot of money into valuable goods that supplement everyday life. And this can include personal effects such as shoes or clothes or even property such as a home. However, such things are vulnerable to risk due to bad weather or even fire that is actually accidental. As a result of such risks, insurance comes into the picture. A warm welcome to this week's presentation of News in Depth. On today's program, we'll be looking at the significance of insurance and we'll be talking to various stakeholders linked to the subject to understand why insurance is important. Stay tuned to this week's program. Basically, what I know about insurance is, you know, like, okay, it's an illegal thing, huh? It's a must when you own a vehicle, you have to insure your car. Because in case of your car is involved in a road accident or anything else, anything bad happens to your car, definitely the insurance company is going to compensate you or repair your car. What I know about insurance is it, 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 it helps. Uh, if you have got, a, 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 for instance, in a, a accident, if you've got a car, you've got a house, a life insurance, even myself, I can insure myself so that at the end of the day, if I've got a problem, then the same insurance you assist me. Do you think a lot of people know insurance? Yeah, they know, but it's just that they ignore it. It's only been that they think as if they won't be paid. They just give, but they won't receive for, for the insurance companies. That's why people ignore but they really know and they are aware that there is insurance. What do you know about insurance? Ah, but actually, I don't know about life insurance. Eh? Okay. Yes. You've not heard of any kind of insurance? Ah, but I heard it, but I don't know what is what is meaning of that. It is clear from these statements that a segment of the population is either ignorant or misinformed on the subject of insurance. Perhaps it would be imperative to begin from the basic understanding of what insurance is about. Okay, in simple English, insurance is a risk transfer mechanism. Uh, insurance, in uh, simple terms, I would say it's a risk transfer mechanism. And in this case, we're talking about transferring the risk from the insurer to the insured. Okay, insurance is a risk transfer mechanism um, that can be used for an individual or a business to transfer their risk to an insurance company who's better qualified to handle that risk in exchange of a premium. So an insurance company is uh, an entity that is specializing in, in managing risk, so to say. So an individual or a business will transfer their risk to an insurance company and they pay a premium uh, in exchange for that transfer and, and the insurance company then gives you that peace of mind. The concept of insurance started thousands of years ago. This was for the purpose of transferring or distributing risk, as practiced then by Chinese and Babylonian traders. The merchants then had to take the risk of navigating vast water bodies at the expense of safety for themselves and their goods. However, to spread the risk of circumstantial loss of their goods, the merchants devised a mechanism to reallocate their goods on many vessels. This was to prevent losses of all goods if put on one ship. Therefore, the Hammurabi Code of 1750 BC is believed to have been the first written insurance policy. These ancient insurance laws were extreme in most respects. However, they offered basic insurance as traders did not have to personally pay back borrowed money if the loss made it impossible to do so. This was with respect to calamities such as disability, death, and flooding. Modernization of insurance is believed to have begun somewhere around 1666 with what has become property insurance. This was after the Great Fire of London, which destroyed more than 13,000 houses. In America, the story was different. It took more than 100 years for insurance to get established. Over time, Insurance has evolved and taken different elements. In most African countries, insurance still seems to be a new concept. For Zambia, the history of modern-day insurance starts with the setup of the Zambia State Insurance Corporation in the 1960s. The company, which is still operating from its original premises, 
had a specific role as outlined by General Insurance Manager Charles Nakosi. This car was formed around 1968, and at that time, I think it was the sole insurance company. Earlier on, there were many insurance companies in the pre-independence era, but around 1968 there was a nationalization, which you know about. This became the sole insurance company. And uh, at that time, there was Zisk and uh, Zinib as a, an insurance broker. Uh, the broker obviously sources for business and passes on to the insurance company to insure. So there were two uh, insurance entities then. This went on up to 1992 when the, the insurance law was repealed to allow now for other liberalization, to allow for other participants to come in. Zisk had a cardinal role to play in the economic targets set at the peak of nationalization. Uh, the significance then, uh, according to government, was that uh, we have managed now to uh, build the economy in terms of the infrastructure that you see across the landscape of Zambia. Everywhere you go, you'll find a building uh, owned by Zambia State Insurance. Then. Uh, not only that, uh, but um, we have managed to train quite a, no a lot of Zambians and introduce the whole concept of insurance to the Zambians. And, um, you will see that uh, Zambia State Insurance has been quite a major player in the economic development of Zambia uh, in many spheres. But uh, indeed, over these over 45 years, uh, we've done as much as we could to ensure that uh, the whole concept of insurance is understood and uh, being a, a national uh, entity, a state-owned entity, mm -hmm. also to create the standards from which all new entrants uh, have fed off. However, economic liberalization in later years brought with it new entrants onto the market. Professional insurance, Madison and Goldman insurance companies are among the earliest private sector players who joined the industry in the early 90s. As professional insurance, uh, the company was established 23 years ago. Uh, it started off as, um, as, 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 as an agency, but you know, after the Act of Parliament, uh, we had to uh, uh, be, um, ca become a full insurance company, uh, and we had to split life and, and general insurance. With these changes on the market, the private sector has dominated the business. Uh, we, in terms of the market share as well, we are comfortably sitting uh, on top at 23%, and there's a huge gap with the person uh, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the other entity which is uh, uh, coming up second and running. Today, there are more than 40 insurance products ranging from expatriate insurance, business interruption insurance, mortgage insurance, travel insurance, and even divorce insurance. In Zambia, motor vehicle insurance has dominated the market due to legal obligations that every vehicle owner has to comply with. It's most popular because it's compulsory. Okay, so that's why most people take up uh, motor insurance. But the other products that we offer as a company that we need to let people know about. We have employers' liability, personal accidents, all those are policies that people can take up. This situation is however a concern for the industry players as highlighted by Christabel Banda, the Insurers Association of Zambia Executive Director. Because more than uh, about 50% of the premiums on the, on the market are, are coming from motor. Uh, so it's, obvi it's obviously a concern, but it's not a strange um, occurrence because obviously motor insurance is mandatory. So because it's mandatory, a lot, a lot more people take it out to comply with the law. So there's, uh, we're doing quite a bit to try and encourage people to take out insurance. And you might also be interested to note that microinsurance now is also taking, uh, 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 taking shape and there's a number of companies that are getting into this space. Currently we have about nine microinsurance products on the market. So people can take out insurance for as low as uh, one quarter per day or 30 kwacha per month, you know, depending on their, their level of income. So there's something for everyone. What then qualifies to be on the insurable list? Insurance is not only about vehicles. We also have insurances for houses. We call it household, as household policy. People can insure their houses, 
people can insure their house contents, people can insure their businesses, their offices, their office equipment, they can all insure those things. Look, today uh, you, you cannot afford to risk anything in life. Uh, people always talk about risking your life, but now we're talking about so many risks that are spread all over uh, in, in, in the country. Uh, homes are catching fire, businesses are catching fire today. So you need to ensure that your businesses are safe and secure. How do you do that? Make sure that you ensure uh, your assets uh, in, in, in that regard. So that's it's true. insurance is very important because not only is your will you have uh, a, a peace of mind, but also your businesses will be safe and secure, you know, going forward uh, in the future. With insurance penetration being continuously low over the last 10 years, the insurance sector contributes about 2% to the country's GDP. The regulators of the industry are concerned with the low uptake of insurance products by the general public. Uptake of insurance, and uh, like the President has just mentioned, the Finscope uh, survey of 2015 indicates uh, that only 5.5% of adult population of 8.1 million have insurance or pensions. This is very low. Um, this is very low as it means that uh, the vast majority of Zambians do not have essential risk coping mechanisms. The industry has nonetheless continued on a growing trend. Today, there are more than 30 insurance firms in Zambia. Insurance has been growing steadily in the last 10 years and we currently have 33 insurance companies up from uh, 27 in 2014. In terms of gross return premium, the industry recorded an overall increase of 17% over 2014. The sector is however suffering from suffocated growth. The industry has been growing over the last couple of years. Obviously the, 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 the pace at which it's growing is not uh, something that um, uh, we are proud of as an industry. There's quite a number of things that we feel need to be done to make sure that the um, the growth rate um, is improved. There are, however, reasons for this stagnated growth of the sector. 42% of Zambians have actually not heard about insurance. Uh, and I'm sure for those that have done mathematics, 42% is a high figure. Uh, if uh, it is, uh, you want to get a distinction, I think you want to aim for 70% if you have to pass an exam. So if you lose 42%, it also means that you will not get that distinction. And therefore to have a population out of the 13 million, or if we take even 6 million of the adult population, for 2% of them have not heard about insurance, obviously sends a, a, a message that uh, we've not done very well in that area. And with the coming of competition, survival in the insurance sector is dependent on innovative products. These products ought to be significantly relevant to the needs of the people. The also wants to see more innovation in the financial sector, especially in micro-insurance. This is why the authority has, been allow has allowed insurers to introduce these products even before the finalization of specific regulations on micro-insurance. Most recently, the increase in load shedding has seen an increase in fire accidents. Occasionally, such calamities grip those with negligent tendencies leading to destruction of valuable property. The effects of such disasters are hard to quantify. One simply has to sympathize with those affected. It is certainly after such disasters that insurance can be appreciated. Um, insurance is important to the economy. There are so many uh, uh, reasons that uh, 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 you know you can advance to, to, to show that insurance is important to an economy. Among, among them, just apart from the fact that we help businesses continue to be in business, we, we help businesses uh, uh, thrive in that they, they, don't, um, um, they don't have to set aside money for a rainy day, but they can t actually take out an insurance policy to mitigate um, um, the risks that they may face. Also, insurance also acts as a, a, a way of pulling resources. The premiums are used, uh, can be used in investments. 
in the country. So there's so many um, um, areas where we can point uh, to why insurance is important. The benefits are even on personal effects. Assuming that you, you were to buy a house yourself, you, you, you get a loan from uh, the bank, you buy a house. Uh, if calamity were to befall you without insurance, it means that uh, two things happen. You've lost a house, but the liability at the bank remains. Okay? Now, with insurance, what will happen is that um, that loss uh, that you have suffered does not signify you going back to your days when you have to pay rentals because your house has been gutted. With insurance, we ensure that we bring you back to the level and economic position you enjoyed just before the calamity befell you, what we call indemnifying or indemnity. It's a technical term, but all it means is that uh, we put you in the same financial position you were before the calamity befell you. When you escalate it to the national level, what it means is that uh, the whole concept of the economy growing is about people doing activities which add value. Now, uh, insurance uh, works in two ways. One, obviously to protect national assets against uh, the calamities which uh, before them, but also it's also a reservoir for pooling resources which go into uh, productive sectors uh, of the economy. Insurance companies are however alive to the responsibility of devising products that are of relevance to citizens. For instance, products of the construction industry cannot do without insurance cover for such highly priced pieces of infrastructure. This is because this infrastructure is for sure investment for the country. You can talk about uh, home insurance, you can talk about house owners insurance and uh, construction insurance. We've got unfinished uh, uh, structures that people are constructing right now. You can see there's a boom in construction everywhere you go, every corner, people are busy constructing. All that can be covered under insurance. Household property is another aspect which demands insurance cover. So not everyone has a house, owning a house, but we're all living somewhere. So it, we, for the householder's policy, you can take up insurance covering what belongs to you in that house, not including the house. If you want this kind of policy, we take a look at what you own. We also include things like cell phones, apparently, Yes, we do. We do. So we look at everything in the house, be it your TV, your radio, your refrigerator. If your bed is pricey, your bed too. We look at all that. We, if you do have receipts, that's very helpful for us because for us to come up with a, a premium that you're supposed to pay, we need to look at the total amount of money that you spent on the property in that particular house. So premium varies. It's not like we have a standard premium to say you will pay this much for a whole year. We do have to assess the property that's in your home. The picture is however different as very few people have had their investments and property insured. The insurance industry regulators are therefore seeking legally backed compulsory need for insurance cover for commercial property owners. We are also concerned with the number of commercial properties that do not have insurance. These by nature should have insurance coverage and the authority and the industry is looking at ways where insurance for such commercial uh, properties should be compulsory. We are uh, working together with the association so that uh, we can look at how we can secure most of these buildings. As you are aware, there have been a number of fires that have been going on, uh, cutting uh, most of the buildings. The low uptake of insurance cover can conceivably still be attributed to little or zero knowledge people have on life insurance, which includes health cover. And the medical insurance basically is, this is, we're looking at trying to cover people in their medical expenses that might be occur in a situation where someone's sick. On experience, uh, the medical insurance has been doing good so far in Zambia because people they have started realizing to have the medical insurance to be the first priority. Uh, because when you look at uh, the mandatory insurance cover like a motor vehicle insurance, that's a mandatory. But we are trying to educate people 
that the medical must be the first priority for them to realize that before you do all these other insurance, you need to make sure that your health is being secured. So what we've done is we've gone flat out in the market trying to sensitize people that they need to realize that their health must be the first priority. And people, they have really corresponded like a sun care, we've got a lot of people, we've got a lot of companies. I think just to mention, the companies that are on board so far, we've got about 140 companies plus. We are managing about 60,000 lives so far in Zambia. That means that's a very good improvement. However, the Insurers Association of Zambia is proposing reforms in the health sector to integrate the aspect of insurance. Us as insurers to provide the health insurance, uh, it's a, such a huge cost because of the unregulated um, healthcare providers who charge what they want, how they want, when they want, uh, with no regard to norms and ethics and a fair pricing system. In other countries, uh, a healthcare provider cannot uh, provide health advice uh, at the same time to dispense medicines at the same time to do many other things. So we think, I think that space needs to be regulated. With Zambia being a predominantly farming nation, customized cover in the agriculture sector has not been left out. Among the beneficiaries of this is the Zambia National Farmers Union. We, we just uh, paid out claims to Zambia National Farmers Union mm -hmm. on their small scale farmers scheme, which is called uh, the Lima scheme. These are peasant farmers or you know, Lima farmers who get loans from um, Zambia National Farmers Union to grow crops like maize and soya beans. Now, as you are aware, we had a crop failure because of the, uh, the drought that uh, we encountered just in the past uh, uh, planting season. Uh, this, is, this general has just paid out about three million worth of claims from uh, an estimated uh, uh, claim amount of about six million. So two days ago, we were paying a check to the National Farmers Union of six, three million kwacha. Now, that's obviously because we also understand that to grow the economy, it's not only about big players, okay? The small scale farmers, the small business is the anchor of future economies. Okay, so as a ZISC general, we feel that we must play a role in that area as well. The benefits do appear attractive. But what can be done to get more people taking up insurance? In order for insurers to have robust solvents to pay out uh, claims when they arise, they need to soundly manage the premiums they collect and the PIA will closely keep an eye on this. Let me also hasten to say that consumer protection is not only about regulatory measures. Yes, it is important, but certainly is not enough. Insurers and intermediaries such as brokers and agents have to put the customer at the heart of their business. Reality is that companies have to take full responsibility for well-protected and satisfied policyholders. Customers are often dependent on advice from those selling insurance and they are very often not able to assess effectively limitations of the, uh, to the advice provided. It is also for this reason that the authority has embarked on a plan to provide as much information as possible to the public so that they can be able to make informed decisions when buying insurance. The players feel that a hindering factor to the growth of insurance in Zambia is simply perception. But, uh, the majority Zambian believes that insurance is expensive. Um, I'll give you an example. If, say, you, Madam Penny, for you had a house with, say, two million quarts, do you believe that uh, the premium you pay per year would be less than 500 quarts per annum for that uh, value of uh, a house? Now, yes, it's true that uh, maybe as insurers we haven't done much to sensitize uh, our our citizens about the necessity for this and that's how come you see whenever there's a fire and the house is gutted the next thing you see is people wailing all over the show because they've lost everything now uh, 
The Insurers Association of Zambia has noticed that, and this is why this, in this year's um, Insurance Week, unlike in the past where we did uh, tables and uh, adverts at Moors, we have decided this time to go into the markets as well. And uh, in the past, the Insurance Week was concentrated in the uh, urban areas, you know, in the main towns, Lusaka and Dola Kitu. But this time, uh, the Insurers Association of Zambia has made sure that this insurance week is being observed in all the provinces. In order to close the information gap, the Insurers Association has since 2013 organized forums for creating linkages between insurers and potential customers. It is a, a whole week that is dedicated to consumer education. Um, what, is, what happens during the week is that we carry out a number of uh, sensitization activities and uh, we have exhibitions throughout uh, the country. So it's a week where we try to highlight the importance of insurance and also to showcase the different products that are available in the Zambian market. Away from bridging the information gap, innovation and professionalism is also being encouraged. In our quest to ensure that uh, we provide quality service, we recently hosted a conference for the industry uh, professionals in Livingstone under the theme Underwriting Excellence, a key to sustainable insurance growth. And uh, I think we challenged ourselves in a number of ways so that we can do away with uh, some of the status quo and be able to deliver excellent service in this very important role that we place ourselves in. This aspect brings in the regulation factor. But the Insurance Association feels that there is need for an overhaul. In terms of the regulatory framework for the, for the industry, currently we are using the 1997 Insurance Act. There were a few amendments that we had done in 2005, but uh, what is needed is a complete uh, overhaul of the Act. And this process has been happening since about 2011. And uh, the insurance, the new insurance act up to now is still not yet enacted. So those are some of the issues that um, obviously would want to be addressed to improve the um, operating environment for the sector. The legislative review position is, however, being redressed. The authority has been working tirelessly at strengthening the regulatory framework governing the financial sector by updating and harmonizing existing legislation. The Insurance Act is one of the bills that is currently undergoing amendment to ensure that it is brought in line with the current operating uh, environment. The minimum capital is also being revised and shortly the authority will be announcing the new requirements. As the regulator of the industry, we will continue leading in promoting fairness in the market for products and services. In order for insurers to have robust solvents to pay out uh, claims when they arise, they need to soundly manage the premiums they collect and the PIA will closely keep an eye on this. As Zambia works to diversify its economy, the insurance sector is one subsector that has potential to grow the economy. Therefore, as the insurance information gap gets filled up, one only hopes that there will be an increase in the uptake of insurance products. We have established on today's program that motor vehicle insurance continues to dominate on the Zambian insurance market, but that also means that it is not the only available option when it comes to insuring valuable property. It has also been made clear that properties such as houses and other home equipment can also be insured. But this is where we end today's program. We'd like to thank you so much for making time to watch this week's program. We do encourage you to join us next week with another interesting news documentary right here on News in Death. I'm Penny Fanyarenda saying goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>